Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur, and uh, we are doing a little bit of a post live stream podcast episode. After we just did the last episode, I finished it, I walked out, and I saw this box and realized, you know what? What the heck? We've kind of already got set up. I mean, we have like a, you know, chat room that's kind of stale at the moment, but oh well. Be and I saw the package and realized I wanted to do a little bit of, not an unboxing per se, but a little bit of a last hurrah, if you will. So I don't know if any of you are aware of Twilight Time. They were a movie distribution company and they were kind of like Criterion Collection Light is the best way I could put it. They didn't have a lot of special features, but they were going after what they considered to be prestige films. They did have like a little booklet with a history. They had isolated music tracks. And each movie, with very, very few exceptions, were only 3,000 copies. Now, they never became the collectible that I think they wanted to be, probably because of some basic things, you know, the movies weren't always prestige. You could get DVD versions far, far cheaper. Also, they were not numbered on the side, and the special features, with few exceptions, really didn't, they didn't go very far. Most of the time, you got an isolated music track and a trailer, and that was about it. But I did like them, and I did like that they brought certain movies to Blu-ray that should be available on Blu-ray, but now, because Twilight Time has them, you only have 3,000 copies of them floating around. Best Picture winners like Oliver and All the King's Men should really be mainstream. They should be readily available, but I guess no one really wants to watch them anymore. So Twilight Time picked them up and put them on Blu-ray, and that's that. So anyway, I... They decided they were going to go under, like they were going to cease operations, they couldn't do it anymore. And in the final days, they fire sailed their discs, you know, get 10 or 12 movies for $100. These usually retail for $30 to $40 each. And so I went and whatever was left, I grabbed, you know, some titles. And so this is my final Twilight Time haul, not that I had two made to begin with. And the first one is Stanley and Iris. Uh, this is from director Martin Rick, and it has uh, Jane Fonda and Robert De Niro. Uh, this only ha has an audio commentary, which is unique. And it's just, it's not a movie you hear about very much anymore, but, you know, it, it is a fairly good movie. So, you know, I was happy to have that. We also have X, Y, and Z. With Elizabeth Taylor, Michael Caine, Suzanne York, and directed by Brian G. Hutton. Now, I don't really know exactly what this is about, but, you know, it's... I've heard of it. I've I've been around the block a few times, so it'll be nice to finally see it. Um, Roger Ebert calls it a loud, boozy celebration of the fact that no matter what Elizabeth Taylor says or does, she's a movie star, it unzips along at a nice, vulgar clip. So... And Pauline Kael, the other famous film critic, said this one has a script that enabled Elizabeth Taylor to come out. The aging beauty has discovered in herself a gutsy, unrestrained spirit that knocks two very fine performers right off the screen. And for the first time I can recall, she appears to be having a roaring good time on camera. Only has an isolated music, musical score, but you know. Uh, then we have April Love with Pat Boone and Shirley Jones. This was directed by... Henry Levin, this has an audio commentary and a trailer and an isolated music track. Uh, not much else, though. So, April Love, that's one of the movies I've got. Oh, uh, this one I've definitely been looking forward to seeing. Um, Bobby, uh, oh, what's it name? Bobby Deerfest? Deerfield, that's what it's called. Bobby Deerfield. Uh, so, this has Dustin Hoffman. It has the, the, the trailer, the commentary, the score. You might notice... Um, a trend here. Also, on the back of every box, it says, let me get it there, like, right, like, right here, that it's limited to 3,000 units. But Bobby Deerfield, that's another one that I got. Uh, this one was, I know, Oscar nominee for Best Actress. It was on Netflix for a while, and I never got around to watching it, but it's called The Happy Ending, and this has Gene Simmons and John uh, Forsyth and Shirley Jones. It was directed by Richard Brooks, who directed... Um, in Cold Blood, I believe. This just has the score and the trailer. But, you know. Uh, this one I'm looking forward to, Bananas, one of Woody Allen's early films. And, of course, obviously, he uh, starred, wrote, and directed it. Um, I think he, yeah, he wrote it with Mickey Rose. So, uh, 
only has a music track and a uh, trailer. That's pretty common. Woody Allen movies typically do not have special features anyway, so that was not a mark against the Twilight. Speaking of Woody Allen, I also have Husbands and Wives. This is one of his best films. This was also the movie he was making, I believe, when he was divorcing Mia Farrow. Uh, music score and trailer. That's all it is, so go now. This one, I... This one I heard good things about. I could go on singing with Judy Garland and uh, Dirk Bogard. Uh, it was directed by Mort Lind... No, that's the score. Uh, who, who directed this? It was directed by Ronald Nemi. And, yeah, Judy Garland was a treasure. She was much more than The Wizard of Oz. I'm looking forward to watching that one. And we have Anna of A, of a Thousand Days. I believe this was a Best Picture nominee. If... Uh, you know, memory serves. Uh, it has Irene Pappas and Anthony Quayle. It was directed by um, Charles Girat. I don't. So you know, looking forward to that one. We have an Oliver Stone here with Talk Radio, and this one has Eric Bogus on. So you know, I don't know if there's anyone really famous, but yeah, Oliver Stone usually makes good movies. I've actually had this on DVD for years and never watched it. Now I will probably watch it on DVD. And the final one that I picked up, and uh, I don't know much about this one, but it looked interesting, have September, with um, Mia Farrow in it. So this was directed, oh, it was directed by Woody Allen, so that's why I picked it up, because it was a Woody Allen film, so I'm a Woody Allen fan, if you can tell. So, anyway, these are the final Twilight Time movies I will ever buy from Twilight Time, unless I decide I want to go to, like, Book Off or something to that effect. You can see they're really not nice, I like the casing, it's a... Uh, it's a shame that Twilight Time never quite was able to pull it off. I'm kind of thinking that the 3,000 unit thing was kind of a blessing and a curse. I think they did not want to overexert themselves, so they would start at 3,000 units. And I think the ultimate goal might have been at one point to have more copies. But they found very frequently, unfortunately, that many of the movies they were releasing weren't even selling out of the 3,000 units. Certain titles would sell out really fast, like Captain Harlock, and if it was like a horror movie, but for the most part, they didn't really sell out as fast as they were hoping they would, and I think that made it very difficult to negotiate to sell more copies of much of anything. I mean, and as you can see from the sides, they do have like a little bit of a, let's do it this way, like a consistency but there's no numbers and there's no reason I would put these together instead of just alphabetizing them like I do most of my movies so anyway that's that's gonna be that's my final Twilight Time sale haul there was one movie I did want that sold out before I could get to it which was Born Free but apparently but I've looked on eBay and while it's not exactly cheap it's you pay a lot less than what you would norm pay re sticker price, but on the site it was like seven dollars, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of regretting not getting that when I had the chance. So you know, hey, that's one of the thing about disc buying when it's gone, it's gone. But hey, you know, at least there's the third hand market. So anyway, that's my final haul. I'd like to know what was your final haul if you in fact did a final haul for Twilight Time movies. Um, I would love to know what movies you got, which ones you missed out on that you are regretting missing out on. Comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.